How do you today on Flipping Science? We're looking at CRISPR and designing new proteins. CRISPR-Cas9, bring me a gene, encoding for a specific protein. Make up your snips at this coded locus. You work so well inside of Scrapped Ococus. Cas9, I'm so alone. Thanks to Sam Moyle for producing this PowerPoint. So we're going to look at how CRISPR can be used to edit and or transfer genes and also discuss the design of new proteins and what they could be used for. So CRISPR is a big brand new technology that's the big buzzword in genetic engineering at the moment. The way it works, um, some bacteria are able to protect themselves from viral invasion using um, the fact that they store some viral DNA in clustered regulatory interspaced short palindromic repeats. So the DNA from the virus is stored inside the bacteria in these CRISPR sections. Um, if the virus attacks at the later date, the bacteria recognizes this and makes an RNA complementary copy of the viral DNA segment. That RNA complementary copy gets uh, loaded into an enzyme called Cas9, and that cats the DNA at a specific site corresponding to the stored viral reference. So by having this enzyme cutting up the DNA present from the virus, that means the viral DNA can't be incorporated into the genome because it's already been cut up into lots of little bits. Now why this can be used for genetic engineering is the RNA sequence that can be loaded into that enzyme, we can design that. We can make our own RNA sequence that goes in there. And what that means is we can cut the DNA at sections that are correspond to the RNA sequence that we insert into the Cas9 enzyme. So the benefit of that is we can cut the DNA using any sequence that we like at any particular point. As long as we know what the DNA sequence is, um, we can make an RNA copy, we insert that into Cas9 and that can cut the DNA there. If we cut the DNA, that means we can insert new DNA into that gap. So we can insert new genes um, into the DNA. And this is really quick and really reasonably easy to do. It's much more simpler than some of the other techniques that we've been talking about. So here's a picture showing how it works. So the white blob here, that's your Cas9 protein. Inside there is the guide RNA. So this could be the RNA for a particular gene that we're looking for that would be complementary to the DNA sequence. The Cas9 enzyme will attach to DNA. It will run along until it finds uh, a section that is complementary to the guide RNA. And then the Cas9 protein will cut the DNA at that section. So now we have a big gap in here. We can then make our own DNA of a particular sequence. This might be a new gene that we want to insert. And that um, gene can be inserted into the gap produced by the Cas9 cut. And then we can use a ligase to join it all up. And then we have a sequence of DNA that we've cut, we've inserted our new gene, and we've sealed it back up together. So we can insert a new gene in a pretty quick and efficient manner. Now this has many possible medical applications. So if you are missing a gene for producing a protein, and that could lead to a medical issue, we could insert that gene fairly quickly and easily into the cells in your body using this CRISPR technique. Now, this is all very new, but it could be something that's really big in the future. The key point is we can determine where we cut the DNA as long as we know what the DNA sequence is we're looking for. We can make an RNA uh, sequence, insert that into Cas9, and then we can cut the genome wherever we like and insert a new gene wherever we like. So this leads to the fact that we can make our own proteins now. So if we look at how a protein that we'd like to make a copy of, we look at the folding structure of the protein using various techniques. We could then code an amino acid sequence that produces a protein of that shape. And if we know the amino acid sequence, we can produce a DNA sequence. And if we do know the DNA sequence, then we can insert that into a cell using CRISPR, for example. What could we use these proteins for? Well, on the surface of many viruses, there are proteins. And if we have those proteins, we could make vaccines based on those proteins um, that we've identified from the viruses. But also bacteria. Bacteria also have proteins on the surface that we could use to identify them. So we can make vaccines, we can make uh, protein spheres similar to liposomes um, and we can use those to deliver DNA pro payloads to cells. We could make new channel proteins to move substances through the membrane. And we could also make proteins that glow when they detect specific molecules. So there's many different uses that we could use for making our own proteins. We're going to go into vaccines specifically here, particularly at the moment vaccines are a big topic of conversation. The protein coat of the virus could be produced using recombinant technologies. So we could make that protein coat, inject it into an animal as an antigen, that will stimulate produce um, the production of antibodies and then we could use those antibodies to help treat people if they've been infected by a particular virus. We could also remove the replication portion of the uh, viral DNA of the virus's genome and just inject the replication deficient virus into people and that could stimulate an immune response. So you've got the viral DNA, there's a section of the DNA that tells the cell to make copies of the virus, we could delete that. 
So we just have the virus being produced and that allows your body to produce antibodies um, that will be familiar to that virus and that will protect you from further infection. Finally, uh, many pharmaceuticals are proteins and if we can use bacteria to produce uh, large amounts of those proteins um, and enzymes, then we can get lots of pharmaceuticals produced really quickly at low cost. And this has been done for the production of insulin, for example. So the gene for human insulin is inserted into a plasmid. That plasmid is inserted into bacteria using the techniques that we've talked about. The bacteria reproduce, and as they're reproducing and living, they're producing the insulin, and then we can uh, remove that insulin from the big mix of bacteria um, that we have. So today on Flipper Science, we looked at what CRISPR is and also how we can use proteins. That's it for Flipper Science today. Bye.